Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Cube Autopilot from the guys over at Profi CNC and Hex and specifically the new standard kit which consists of the Cube Orange alongside the newly updated carrier board that has built-in ADS-B in. As mentioned, this is going to be the standard kit moving forward and it is going to be the replacement for the Black Cube and the standard carrier board. Now, Profi CNC and Hex have partnered with UAVionics to build in that ADS-B receiver. Now, if you don't know what ADS-B is, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video, but do check out this website on the FAA. But the basics are, it's a system that allows you to see the location of any aircraft fitted with an ADS-B out transmitter. Now, this system is ADS-B in, which is receive only. So it means you will be able to see their position, but it does not transmit your own. Now, pretty much most commercial airlines are fitted with ADS-B, but there are some calls to have it on all manned aviation. And the idea of this is that you will be able to see within your ground station the location of any aircraft that comes within range of the ADS-B receiver on your cube. Now, before I get into it, I will mention that this system is available to order now. You can get it from 3DXR in the UK, who's one of the main dealers for this system. They're a fantastic dealer and I wouldn't have been able to make this video without them. So please do check them out. Something else that's worth mentioning is the cost of this system as well. It is currently just $250 or £250, including the Cube Orange. Now, if you were to buy an ADS-B in receiver on its own, that is going to cost you $249 in the US or about £249 in the UK. So it is an absolute bargain having this ADS-B built in to the Cube because you're getting your flight controller as well as the ADS-B sb for all of that money and the basics are you're getting the adsb for free based on the current pricing looking at what's included with the kit you get the cube orange pre-mounted to the carrier board as well as an i2c extension board you have your bag for your main cables as well as the standard power module included they also give you some foam pads for mounting it to your frame and you get a small instruction leaflet as well Taking a closer look at the main unit, you will see it is very, very similar to the original cube and carrier board. You can see that the writing's been updated to include avionics. You'll also notice that the two USB ports are gone because there's no longer an Intel Edison fitment. You still have the dual power inputs, and just like the original carrier board, you've got your standard servo or your RC outputs if you want to use them too. Looking on the other side, you also have all of the usual ports, but they have properly labelled the CAN 1 and CAN 2 now as well. You still have the USB port on the side of the cube, as well as the built-in SD card. Now, looking on the other side, the new thing on this one is the ADS-B in antenna. Where there was a blank spot before, you now have this little length of wire that allows you to pick up that signal from the ADS-B aircraft. Now, before you can use your Cube Orange, you're going to need to put some firmware on it. Now, the Orange Cube with the ADS-B is only compatible with Ardra Pilot version 4.0 onwards. Now, at the time of making this video, 4.0 was in beta and it is only currently available for Rover or Plane. However, the Copter version will be available hopefully very shortly. However, if you do want to use it with Copter, you can download the daily build version, which does have support. However, However, when you are setting this up and if you are watching this three or four months after I've released it, you will need to make sure you're using the correct version and it is 4.0 onwards. Once the firmware is all installed and it's ready to connect, you simply go into the top and if it's all done properly with the Cube Orange specifically, you should see two COM ports. You'll get COM11 and 12, for instance, in my set case, and you'll have a Mavlink COM port and an SLCAN COM port. So what we're going to do is choose the Mavlink click connect and then my ground station which is mission planner will connect to the cube no problem at all now th at this stage we all our parameters are set at default and whilst the board does have the adsb in connected it isn't actually set up and there are some parameters that you need to change to get that adsb in working now they do include this little leaflet with the cube kit and they do tell you 
what parameters it is you need to do. But we're going to do it on this already. Now, I have actually set these, but I will show you the quickest way of doing them. The first thing you are going to need to do is enable the ADSB itself. So what we're going to do is go into config and tune in. For me, I tend to go into the full parameters list and I use the search function down the right hand side to search for what we're looking for. So the first one is ADSB underscore enable. So ADSB underscore N. And once you get the right in started, it will actually bring up the parameter for you. Now that will need to be set to number one as it is on mine. When you get it as standard, it will be set on zero. So change that to number one click write your params. The second setting you will need to change is then the serial port board. Now the port it is connected to on the cube orange is serial 5. It is using the internal serial port but it is serial number 5. So you will need to search for serial 5 And once the settings come up for that, you want to make sure your Serial 5 protocol is set to number 1, which is Mavlink. And then just check your Serial 5 board is actually set to 57 for 5700. 5, and once you've got that set, you know then it's ready to go. The next thing you need to do is set the streaming options for how it actually sends the ADSB data to your ground station. Because remember, it's actually taking the data on the unit itself and forwarding it to your ground station. And the last parameter we need to set to that is SR0 underscore. And we'll wait for that to come up. Oh. Once that then refreshes, we need to set the SR0 underscore ADSB and set that to value two, and that is the stream rate or the hertz rate that is going to send it to our ground station, which in this case is Mission Planner. I just want to put a pause in here and add in a slight correction as well. You may also need to set SR1 underscore ADSB to two as well, because this setting sets the serial output for your relevant serial port for the ADSB stream. Now, SR0 puts it out via the USB port on the side of the cube, however, you might need to set SR1 to 2 as well so it outputs your stream over the serial 1 port. So if you are connecting to it via wireless radios or Wi-Fi radios or anything like that you may need to turn SR1 underscore ADSB to 2 as well as the SR0. Once you've done all of those settings change you need to make sure that you always click the right prams button and then that will send the data to the flight controller and save the settings that we have set. Now that is the basic settings for making sure that the ADSB will work. There are some additional settings as well which enable the avoid action settings for the ADSB because it does have it in the flight controller is capable of taking action on your behalf if it's going to detect a collision. However, I'm not going to go onto them in this video. That's for a little bit more advanced users. In my personal opinion, setting the ADS-B to on is the best option at this stage. And you're then able to see all of the aircraft that appear within Mission Planner. Okay, so I'm just out and about with the cube and I've got it set up on a Wi-Fi adapter just to try and demonstrate this ADSB in action. So I've simply got the cube with the ADSB board connected on a USB on a battery just to power it up and I've got the laptop connected to the flight controller via a Wi-Fi adapter on the UART port and I've got it on a UDP and I've got Mission Planner connected. Now we've got an aircraft coming over now pretty much any second and hopefully we'll actually see it appear on the screen as soon as it actually becomes in range. Now the way the ADSB does work on the cube is that it allows you to make some setting changes as well within Ardropilot about what altitude aircraft will be shown, what range out from where your location is is as well now obviously the main fundamental is it will not appear on screen until it is within range of the flight controller itself because it does have an onboard antenna and whilst it's not very large it does pick up aircraft i found a good 20 30 kilometers no problem at all and that is with it sitting on the deck obviously if it was in the air you're going to pick it up much much better now we've got one coming overhead now any second 
and I'm hoping he will actually appear on the screen down by here. Now, I've got um, the screen recording as well, just to be able to show you guys this too. So as soon as it appears, we will have a look. And as you can see, the first aircraft has just appeared. Now, we're actually likely to get a second one appear on the screen as well, because there's actually two coming into range, because I can keep an eye on it on my flight radar. Now, as you can see, the plane has appeared. If I highlight it, you can see it comes up with the ICAO code. But if you actually click on it, it'll actually leave the tag on permanently for you as well. So you're able to track it and know which aircraft it is. And as we can see, that it is the ICAO 4 ca 614 and as you just seen then the second aircraft that i said was flying over has just appeared on screen as well so we've got the second one in view now too and again if i wanted to track that one i could simply click on it and we'd have the tags overhead now what i have noticed is depending on how their adsb is set up whether it will show you the airspeed but it does give you the head in the altitude as well as all of the other information as well and that's pretty much it in action and, and it just simply works as straightforward as that not only does the ADSB work with Mission Planner, you can also use it on the Hearling system as well. Now I quickly set this up on the table and you can see I've got it set up on Q Ground Control with Hearling and you can see that it is also showing the location of the aircraft on the maps as well. And again, it works exactly the same way as it would on Mission Planner through Hearling, but you would need to set the correct output on that serial port. So SR1 underscore ADSB rather than SR0, depending on what serial port you're using. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a number of other videos on the ADS-B and Cube Orange around setting it up properly with the new 4.0 version of Ardra Pilot. And we're also going to be talking a lot about the Healing system as well and showing you that, especially for fixed wing users, because I've got some stuff I want to share with you, especially around this self-centering throttle stick. Now, if you want to order any of this stuff, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. They are a fantastic dealer and they absolutely really do know their stuff, especially on the Ardra Pilot gear and the Profi gear from Hex as well. So please do check them out. And as I said, the link is in the description. That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, please do subscribe and I will do another video again soon.